we have another bottom bracket video coming up this time about under rotation it's a term that we've used in the past and in fact quite a lot of you in the comments said can you explain it a little bit more and today i've got a fantastic example that really demonstrates it well so i'm going to take you through what it actually means what's happening how we can identify it diagnose it and hopefully potentially fix it as well Today in this down, we've got this rather lovely stalk. It is super lightweight bite. I mean, this is so high spec and light is unreal. Comes fitted with a set of Praxis cranks. And as we took these out, I'm gonna come up to the camera and show you these. We can see these witness marks. So this black anodizing, you can see all around here. And all of a sudden it starts going light where the anodizing has been worn away. Now, this scar in the middle is caused by something on the inside, which we need to remove as well. But we're mostly concerned where the bearings have been running. And again, here on the drive side, I've just removed the, the chain ring. So you can see, you see black anodizing, untouched, absolutely perfect. And as we come round, you can see where the anodizing has been worn away. And if we look at this sort of more close up, you can imagine this act of pedaling that we've got the bearing scarring away at the shaft here. And then as we come round the pedal and stroke, the non-drive side is starting to be worn away here. Now, the term under rotation is when this is what we call the shaft and the inner race of the bearing here, when there is a significant amount of friction in the bearing, that it's easier for the shaft to slip on the inner race of the bearing than it is for the bearing to rotate. Now, this would normally happen if there was some kind of restriction in that bearing that was causing it to just temporarily bind enough for the shaft to want to slip and then it would release. This could happen for a number of reasons. One, this could be, this hole could be too small. So that bearing is being like compressed and squeezed in like an oval egg shaped where it can go loose, tight, loose, tight. That creates this effect here. Um, or it can be done from misalignment as well. So if the left and the right is out of alignment with each other, then we're gonna get this um, binding as well because the shaft is, is pretty set. Now, a quick word on this. You'll often blame people like Praxis and SRAM and say, oh, they're really poor quality shafts, but they're not. You'll get this on Shimano as well. It's just that it's not as easy to identify on Shimano because it's all the same color. Whereas people like Praxis and SRAM anodize it. And it's normally the layer of anodizing that goes first. But if you allow this to continue, eventually it'll wear past the anodizing into the aluminium and eventually you'll start to undersize the shaft itself which then you start to get the the, uh, the shaft wobbling on the inner races of the bearings so first thing we're going to do is get these out see if we can figure out what's going on okay here are our bearings this stringy stuff you can see here this is like part of the silicon glue to hold them in we'll show you more about that in a second when we reinstall them yeah um, so taking these out of the frame they feel significantly better than when they were in the frame. Now that's always a bad sign because that kind of means that something is like literally squishing these um, to cause that friction. So these feel a whole lot better. Remember these are Praxis M30, which means the drive side is 30 mil and the non-drive side is a little bit smaller, which is why these bearings look a little bit different. And again, that non-drive side feels a whole lot better than when it was in the frame. So. Let's investigate the frame. A quick close up here, and this looks pretty good. More of that silicone glue, which I'll talk about in a second. Surface looks good. So I'm just gonna clean this out with a piece of GT85 and a bit of blue cloth. Okay, and the first gauge that we try is our 40.85 millimeter. This should be a slip fit. That's fantastic. Both sides slip fit. Next up, we try our true go, no go gauge. This is 40.95. And this should be slightly difficult to push in. Yeah. Okay, so we know we're marginally undersized. I wouldn't normally touch this at this point because the 40.85 goes in absolutely fine. This will go in with a bit of hand pressure, but it's not ideal. It's, it's so close, it's probably not worth risking anything going wrong and just leaving it like it is. What I am concerned about though, is the alignment. 
Quick side note, because I'm about to introduce a tool to you that you've never seen, and that's because we have been developing it. This is a set of bottom bracket gauges that sort of build on the concept from Hambini. And this is the 40.85 gauge, which we call the fitting tool. This is the one that we'll cover in Blue Dicom. Use it to slide in, look for the high points, sand them down, Blue Dicom again, and eventually get back to a round hole again. And then once we've got that sorted, we should have two 40.95 gauges for drive side, non-drive side, that are then in spec, and we can put these in all the way. The flange is important because we should be able to push these in with quite a lot of hand pressure, remember. This should not be an easy fit, but it should go all the way. In the video, you'll see that there's some furniture inside the frame that's, that's stopping that, which means in the next prototype, I need to take some width out of this. But uh, all going well, we should be able to put this through our 25 mil bright bar, and we will have a fit up similar to that C3 bearing fit, um, which should spin freely like this. And you'll see in the video that it doesn't, even though it should be faced up to the frame. Again, please don't criticize the video. These are prototypes. The purpose of this video is to help explain and visualize what under rotation means. And this frame had such good symptoms it was too good opportunity to miss filming for you. So uh, look beyond the fact that these aren't faced up for now. We will come back to these once we've made some modifications. All right, back to the video. So what I've done, I've got this gauge in both sides and this is our bright bar. You can see how easily that rotates. And as I hit the other side, there's a restriction there that is now harder to push. And with a bit of wiggling, it will go but now, with that shaft located, I can turn it, I can feel that restriction there, and that's the under rotation. I'm gonna get some blue dicom on here and see if I can show you what's happening. So this is steel blue layout fluid, we just call it blue dicom. It's basically to stain the metal, and as you scratch it, you'll see where those scratches lie. So as I'm turning this, I can literally feel there's like a stiff part here and then about, what's that, about four o'clock. And then about here, at the four o'clock position, go through another tight bit and then through that back half of the clock face, it's nice and loose again. So about half of it. So as I pull this out now, here we go, now we can see those witness marks. So here's a closer look at this shaft and here's that part where this part of the shaft has not contacted the inside of the gauge at all. And then we have all these witness scars from where I've been rotating it. And I'm pretty sure you can imagine if I was to do this on the other side, we would see exactly what we're seeing on that crank set. So a bit of an alignment problem, but not a massive one. If this shaft didn't go through at all, that'd be a clear rejection. What we have is a very minor problem. So. What are we gonna do about it? Well, in this case, nothing. Normally, this would be a really clear cut example of fit a Hambini bottom bracket. The only way we're gonna solve this is by having a one piece bottom bracket that goes through the entire frame. However, we can't do that in this case because we are fitting a 30 millimeter axle into a 41 millimeter hole and Hambini just doesn't make a bottom bracket in that configuration. It's all over his website. You can go and research his own reasons why. But essentially, it would need making special bearings and they're never going to be that reliable. Now, to reinstall bearings like this, you need Loctite SI595, which is a silicon sealant adhesive. So I'll show you how this works. First up, contact cleaner. Give that a right good clean and get rid of any oil or residue. So while I'm in here, you can see that scoring that was on the middle of the shaft was actually being caused by these two bolts. So I'm just gonna remove those two bolts. We don't really need them because we're using a wireless shifter anyway. So it was just needless. We don't need those bolts. So when you're using this sink silicon sealant, you need a single bead right near the rim. Because remember, as you're gonna push this in, it's gonna smear the silicon sealant further back. So this needs to be right at the front. So 
So I hope that video was somewhat useful in showing you how to identify the under rotation and demonstrate that whole process of the inner race of the bearing coming under some friction so that the shaft continues to spin and therefore puts wear marks on side the shaft rather than allowing the shaft and the inner race of the bearing to rotate together at the same time. And if you do have these witness marks, hopefully what to check for. Um, the tools that we've used in this, we're actually sort of developing a suite of tools like this, hopefully for bike shops, because essentially I think if every bike shop had some tools to measure this, this frame should never have been built and given to a customer. Those tools would have demonstrated it was out of alignment from the factory, could have been sent back to Stork to be corrected. Now we're on to its second owner, and the second owner is picking up this problem of going, well, what do I do now? And hopefully we've just used the tools to demonstrate why he's getting suboptimum bottom bracket performance and giving him a solution. Sure, he's not chosen that solution right now. I think that's very wise, but in the future, we know where to put that investment to get to the bike that this probably should be. Okay, if you are interested in those tools at all, please get into the comments, let me know. I'm definitely keen to find some sort of bike shops which have sort of YouTube channels or social media influence to help me test them and sort of get the word out. Uh, I wanna develop a whole suite of them, so not just the 40.95 gauges, but also a 40.85 fitting tool that you've seen us use in the videos before where we would use that with the blue dicum to sand down and reshape a bottom bracket and hopefully in a set of 46 millimeters as well. So if you're keen, get in touch with the, um, on the channel email and I'll see what I can do. And yeah, we're gonna keep testing and showing you exactly why a set of gauges could be really, really useful in not just identifying, but also helping customers make better choices about how they want to go about repairing things. All right, till the next one, take it easy.